the big news in the NFL today, and there's potentially just as big news, but it got kind of swept under the rug because of this hip drop, drop tackle thing. But there's a couple things that are happening next year. They're, they're working to ban the hip, hip drop tackle. What that means is next year it's going to be a penalty, I'm sure, and that they're going to emphasize it, not unlike when they, they put an emphasis on landing on the quarterback and that sort of thing. And I thought they were really they, – they, they tried to scare you straight, like right off the bat. Like a lot of times with a new rule like this, the first couple of weeks, they're just doing it nonstop. One year I remember when um, there was a, a PI rule that got amended or something outside. And this goes to show you how quickly we forget and, and move on and, and adjust to the changes in the game is we'll complain about something incessantly – because it's new and because the NFL is like putting an, uh, you know, an emphasis on it. So the first month or six weeks of the season, you're like, we can never go on like this. But once they scare you straight and people make the adjustment, they kind of back off it. And I'm hoping that's what happens here because, you know, while I do see the dangers of the hip drop tackle, which, by the way, this wasn't a thing I had ever heard of. You know, I would echo A.J. Hawk's sentiments on the Pat McAfee show earlier today. They had Adam Schefter on and Schefter asked him, hey, when did you employ this hip, do- hip drop tackle? How much do you think you did in your career? And, and A.J. Hawk said, well, to be honest with you, I didn't even know it was a thing until like six months ago. So I can't tell you how many times I've done this. I, you know, like, and I think for a lot of people listening right now who are a little bit more casual or maybe don't follow the NFL as closely and just listen to this podcast, the hip drop tackle is something that, that has come up over the last calendar year. You saw it happen to Mark Andrews. You've seen it happen to Tyreek. You saw it happen to Tony Pollard in the playoffs. A year or two ago, even though I didn't think the Pollard one and they used it on the teaching tape of what is a hip drop tackle, is that crazy? And that's, you know, it's a bang, bang play. A lot of, the, a lot of these things are going to look like hip drop tackles when for sure they're not meant to be and they're borderline in the execution. But the, the point is what we saw Logan Wilson do to Mark Andrews on a Monday night, I think this year, at the sticks – which is the only re- recourse naturally based on the momentum of the player sometimes or the p- position on the field. When you got to get a guy down right now, you don't want him going forward anymore. You're not trying to hurt him, but you're ending up trying to drop your weight and get the, the ball carrier down. And it's not that easy. This tackle is now going to be a point of emphasis. It, they're trying to get rid of this tackle. And, you know, the, the NFL says, 20 to 25 times more dangerous than another tackle. I'm sure there's a way that they glean this information, but to me that's pretty convenient data. I don't know. I'd love to go through that that study and see how they came up with that number. But there are players that have gotten hurt this way, and they say it's akin to the horse horse uh, collar tackle. And in some ways, I get I get the physics of that claim. But you know, when I was in the league, we talked about a gator tackle. Not unlike AJ Hawk, we might have called it something different, or it was just. You know, it was just get the guy down. And and I think this is the most important thing to understand if you're listening and you're wondering, like, why can a player not avoid doing this? As a player, as a defensive end who was coming down the line a lot, horizontally, you know, sideline to sideline to try to chase a play down on the backside or that sort of thing, or a tackle in the open field, you're running really fast and football's three-dimensional, dude. It's not just, you know, it's not just you're chasing after a guy, he's running away from you. He might be running away from you and cutting it upfield at the same time. And so what you do is you end up on the backside. And I was a poor tackler, so I was out of control. And I often ended up on the backside of guys' shoulder pads because I think it's it's ingrained in your head as an athlete that you know, even in a moment's notice, that this guy's trying to go left right to left and I'm running down the line and he's trying to go upfield well I got to stop his momentum I got to get him down and I don't want to ride him for four yards like I've been on Marshawn Lynch's back for four or five yards I didn't drop my hips I jumped on his back and I was like a fucking cape dude he carried me for five yards and that's what can happen with these ball carriers now so oftentimes what you do is you run full speed a lot of times, not purposely, you end up on the back shoulder of these guys. And, you know, when, when you look at the, the definition of the rule, and Macon showed me this earlier, it was like, it, you know, you've got to have three elements to this thing to make it a hip drop tackle. Number one is the grip. Yep. Number two is the twist. Number three is the drop. Okay. And you got to have all three of those things. So I, I'm, I'm going to try to make a case for why it is not intentional at the very least. And two, it's probably unavoidable in a lot of football plays. Like, number one, I never intentionally drop my hips on somebody. Now, sometimes I look at the Logan Wilson tackle, and I think that looks intentional to me because he's so good at tackling. You know, he's a linebacker. This is what he does every day. So, like, 
I assume that his job is a little easier than mine, so I assume some intent there because he's executing it perfectly by the letter of the law. Um, but you hear linebackers talk about it, and, and they think it's, it's, it's ludicrous. you know. And so I look at this thing, your momentum is literally what's twisting. You know, gripping, you have to grip. Okay, so number one, I got to grip. I got to get a hold of the ball carrier. Two, I'm going full speed and I'm, and I'm running perpendicular to his, his heading, right? Because it's a running back who's hitting the hole and I'm trying to close that hole immediately on the backside because I'm unblocked or whatever. I am naturally going to whip around the side of his back. You know, when you grab onto somebody's shoulder and you're running full speed and they're running sideways, you are going to go in the direction that you that you were running, right? And if you have grip, you're going to probably swing around this guy's back forcefully. And then what do you do? Do you hang out on his back? Do you fall off? Or do you drop your, your, your weight? Because that's what a tackle is. And so, listen, Kyle, my brother got online today, and he's, he's pro – Pro implementation of the rule. Well, he's an offensive guy. That's all I can figure out on this one, because I couldn't disagree more. I think this is a rule that's going to be disruptive. I think it's a it's it's an unfortunate reality of an, an unsafe game, and we have many of those unfortunate realities that we don't try to change. You know, uh, this is one that we're going to try to change because we say it's twenty to twenty five times more dangerous than a regular tackle. Also, Adam Schefter said not unanimous when he was describing the way this was discussed among NFL. Uh, front office people that he talked to. So I, I've laid out why it happens. It happens because it's a it's a fast three dimensional game, and players are moving really fast. They're not always heading up, tackling a guy face up. They're not always tackling a guy directly from behind. A lot of the tackles that we make are from the side. Now you could say get your head across, but this game is played at a fucking fast speed with some of the best athletes in the world. Where he is now is not where he's going to be and no and no pursuit angle is going to help sometimes when it comes to an unathletic relatively speaking defensive end like me or a linebacker trying to get a guy down or a corner who got beat on a slant in the middle of the field. Like this is going to happen a lot. And I just want to say this. Where this is going to go just like the stay off the guy's head is it's going to go it's you you're just moving the danger somewhere else you know you're just redistributing the danger and the danger was perfectly exhibited in that Detroit LA uh, playoff game and people say hey Kirby Joseph looks like he's taking guys legs out but you created the situation where guys are saying well I have if I want if I want to get a guy down violently I'm going to go below the knees because I can't hit him up top anymore you know you don't want the Michael Pittman Jr. thing to happen you also don't want the Tyler Higby thing to happen where is the strike zone they'll tell you in the middle of somebody's body but you know defenders are putting themselves in peril sometimes you're giving up 100 pounds to a tight end Am I going to launch myself at this guy's midsection? No, I'm going to fucking take out his knees. And so there's going to be a lot of people that are going to call certain tackles dirty next year. When a guy's coming in from the side, if I were a player, because I wasn't the best tackler, what I would do now is I would be like a bowling ball and I'd be headed for the side of the guy's knee. And then you're going to tell me that I'm dirty and that I'm trying to take guys' ACLs out. And that's not the case. I just need to get the guy on the ground and you have handcuffed a lot of inferior athletes like myself i don't worry about safeties or corners like i worry about the big guys trying to get guys down and you know i saw they used an example of um a tackle in the pocket and i agree with that example when you're in the pocket if you hip drop tackle a guy you should maybe get penalized but out in the field it's too hard man it's just too hard and the reason they're doing this has nothing to do with safety make no mistake if, if it was about safety, we wouldn't play football. If it was about safety, we would ban double teams. If it was about safety, we would ban cut blocks. If it was about safety, we would fucking change the surface of, of, of the field of play. Because you want to talk about people's foot getting stuck in the ground and all this stuff. If we really cared, we'd turn every field to grass and we'd ban the hip drop tackle. If we really cared, what we would do is the minute you jump on somebody's back, they blow the, they blow the play dead. That, that, to me, is safer than this. Why aren't we doing the safer thing? Because it's about offense. And because as you look at the, the, the league, every year they're trying to make these incremental changes to where it's more like seven on seven. It's never going to be a, a game that's not dangerous. So what you get is a dangerous game and a game that's slanted towards the offense. And uh, I think people are still going to get hurt. This doesn't clean the game up. Um, but what it does, it gets the points up because this, especially in the middle of the field, is going to be a problem for defenses. And in 2018, 23.3 points a game. 2019, 22.8 points a game. 2020, 24.8. It Was that the pandemic year 2020? 
Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, 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 no crowds in the in the uh, in the stands. Easier for offenses on the road. You know, you get twenty four point eight points a game. Uh, two thousand twenty one, twenty three points. Two thousand twenty two, twenty one point nine points, and then this year, twenty one point eight points. So in the in the NFL's eyes, if you take out uh, you know that twenty 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 one period, like a, a difference of a point and a half, two points a game is a big deal to them. And I think last year you looked at it with all the quarterbacks getting hurt and like it's the last thing you want. You don't want scoring to be down. You don't want quarterbacks to be on the sideline. Everything is slanted to affect that change so that they can score more. And then the second thing is this: the the, the rule that came up off of this that's kind of hidden behind it is the new the new review rule which is that coaches will get a third challenge if they hit their second challenge, right? If you don't they go, fuck, two, for if two, you go yeah. two for two, you don't fuck up your challenges, you're awarded a third challenge. Well, no, now if you just go one for two, right? You just need to go so one for two. You go one third. for two. And here's what I think they're they're going with here. So like on the play, on the player safety end of things, they're 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 couching this hip drop tackle in the interest of player safety when it's actually about scoring and they're couching this this challenge thing as an effort to give coaches more opportunities to get calls right, when really they're avoiding that that late play in the game where there's no challenges remaining, they want to give they want to give as many people second looks at these bad calls because we had as many bad calls as we ever have last year, and I think they're they're mopping up for these officials with that with that rule change, and they're trying to to make things even harder on defenses with the other change. It has nothing to do with safety. It has nothing to do with 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 you know adding another challenge just for the fuck of it. They're doing it to cover for the officials and make the game, you know, more of an offensive game. We joke about it. I think they don't mind the controversy when it comes to yeah. challenges. Yeah. It's another commercial break, oftentimes. Damn Gene Steratore is gonna have to ask for a pay raise with all these hip drops. What's interesting, it looks like more penalties, more stoppages, more reviews. Don't you think the big guys hitting a quarterback in the pocket have adapted to not putting their body weight on to quarterbacks? Is there any I sort still of think the body weight's ridiculous? Is there any sort of mid hip drop tackle fix to the body weight on somebody's lower extremities? It would seem no. I, I don't know. Too fast. I don't know that there is. Like you know, when you tell a guy don't don't land on a guy, like there's a lot of ways we can do that differently. Like the 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 situation in which you come upon the tackle is the same, right? Like, okay, I, I've I've made contact with the quarterback, my head's down, my my shoulders on his hip. Now I just need to gator roll. You know, we would call it a gator roll. What's like, a gator roll? Well, a gator roll would be a way not to. I mean, like you can gator roll. You grab the guy and you roll, right? To get him down, and in that scenario, like what happens to a quarterback in the pocket? You're not trying to hurt him, but you are slamming him on the ground with the roll. Um, and you can do it softly to avoid the the weight landing on a quarterback by like changing the dispersion of your weight. Um, there's a lot of ways around not landing on a quarterback. I don't know how you don't gator tackle somebody. I mean, like in the open field, I don't know how you don't hip drop, quote unquote, tackle somebody in the open field when you're running 18 miles an hour chasing Jamar Chase, and you're a backer that gives up 0.4 tenths of a second or 40, and all of a sudden you find yourself on this guy's back, like what are you going to do? Mm-hmm. You know, or if you're, a, if you're Devin White and you're running sideline to sideline and you end up on, you know, this t- tight end from Dallas is back, and, you know, you could either get drug another five yards or get the guy down. Like I don't know how you're going to change the way you've been tackling since you were 12 years old. Everybody's got to be more like AD, just just push him down. You just got to grab people. Or yeah. you have to, I mean, honestly, harpoon people in the legs. Mm-hmm. I mean, so, that, that's where it's going. So it sounds like we're taking the overs. We have to take the overs, and that, that pains yeah. me because I'm the undertaker. But it, it, it just fucking pains me. As a fan, it's hard to take these ticky-tack things seriously because the same organization is asking a guy to play a game on Sunday and a game on Thursday. Yeah. And it's like this just masks that whole big idea here, and it's hard to kind of because their that. motivation is not safety. If no. their motivation were safety, there'd be a ton of things that they would do right now to make the game safer. Just like I said, the motivation with the third challenge is to cover their asses on bad officiating late in games, and the motivation with this thing is to drive the points up. It has nothing to do with safety. If it, if it were quarterbacks that were getting hit more often – 
with these hip, hip drop tackles, which doesn't happen as much because they're not running full speed in the pocket, right? You know, it's a difficult – if guys were really trying to do this, you'd see it more in the pocket, you know, because this would be an acceptable way to get a quarterback down. Guys aren't doing this on purpose. Guys are doing this out of necessity and because physics dictate that sometimes you're going to be on somebody's back hip swinging around to their right hip 100 miles an hour, going from the left hip to the right hip behind them, eventually your force will pull them and eventually your force will drop you to the ground. That is physics, man. And so we're, we're starting to rewrite the laws of physics here uh, without changing the game for the offensive players. Have you slowed down this Mark Andrews injury? I mean, there's literally nothing that could be done differently. Let me see it. I mean, I remember in, in real time just thinking, God, that guy's so athletic. There's no way he doesn't know what he's doing. But then when it slowed down, I remember having the same thought. Yeah. I, I, I don't know. No, you know what it is? You see that yellow line there? And yep. you, can see, you can see Logan Wilson, before he knows that, the, that Mark Andrews is hurt, put his foot between him and the marker. Like, he gets him down. And this is the red zone. Like, this is the low red in a 0-0 ball game. Cincinnati's fighting for their playoff lives. They lose this game anyways. Burrow gets hurt for a second time. And he but he gets Mark it. Andrews down just short of the sticks, gets up, kind of gives him a little teabag, kind of is like, hey, get back, man. You can get the fucking first down. But what we're, we're litigating here is the tackle, not, not, you know, not the aftermath. And then he realizes he's hurt and kind of backs off. I don't think this like is a his, dirty play. His body weight doesn't even really hit him. Run it back one more time. His knees go over him. Do you see what I'm saying, though? So, like, he just ends up on his hip. I mean, that's not even a hip drop the way I, I look agree. at it. A I hip agree. Drop, like, when I think about a hip drop, I think there's some, like, period of riding the guy's back and then swinging your legs around him and dropping your legs. Like, this, this is an unfortunate situation. It's just it's an, a guy trying to get a guy down at the sticks. That's, that's just a football an ankle play. getting caught. It's just a football play. An ankle getting caught under his hip right there. But not a hip drop tackle. Yeah, no, no, no. I, I listen. This is going to be really difficult. And with any of these changes, and we've seen so many of them. So, like, I tweeted this earlier because we we see this all the time. We, we hey, we're changing the rules on the quarterback. We're changing this rule with DPI. We're changing this rule. We're going instant re replay. I can. There were people that said they were never going to watch the game again. People that said they were never going to watch the game again a couple years ago. They're they're back in the chow line. The, the whole point is. The NFL has realized something. The NFL has realized that it is bulletproof. And I like too big to, fa to fail, whatever you want to call it. Like, I don't think there's a Rome scenario with the NFL. I just think the NFL is just, just not going to fail. The NFL, we, we, are too, we are too in love with the NFL as a country to ever put it down. And if you put it down, somebody else is going to pick it up. Because there's young fans that are growing up right now playing flag football, right? So... You know, when these older guys, these old hardos like me are like, what are we, is going to be flag football next? So there's a whole generation of kids that all they do is seven-on-seven seven camps and flag football. And so the game is changing. And whatever the, the motivation for the NFL, it might not be altruistic. It might not be just to make the game safer. It might be to make more money, to score more points, to cover for the officials, whatever they're making changes about. But every time we make a change, people go up in arms about it and act like they're not going to watch football anymore. I will be back in the chow line. Everybody will be back in the chow line. Show me somebody that complained about the hip drop tackle today that will not be watching football this fall. Because if you know about the hip drop tackle and what's going on in the NFL, you're plugged into the calendar. Mm -hmm. They already got you. It's the middle of March Madness, and what feels like the biggest news today on X is the hip drop tackle. So you care about football, and I have never met somebody that watch the NFL enough to follow it March, April, May, June. I've never met this person. And then in the fall is like, I can't watch this shit. Yep. You're right. It's just not going to happen. They know that. The NFL knows that. So whatever they do, they know they're still going to grow. Uh, hey, listen, I, uh, there's not some big take here. The take is that uh, like, I don't like the rule, and I think it's, it's for the offenses. But – I'm not going to throw a tantrum about it because eventually I'm going to adjust. It's just the way it is. And I don't have to worry about it anymore as a player. I think if I was a player, it would be a big deal. I think another thing, though, the 15 yards, like make that a five-yard penalty. Make yeah. that – like why does that have to be such a big amount of – Yeah, yards? no, that's a, good, that's a good point. You know? There's a way to get the emphasis without like killing teams for it. 
because you know you get one of these fifteen yarders. I mean, that, that, what, yeah, what you're in, when, then all of a sudden you're in field goal range. Yeah, you it's a big deal. It's which will help scoring. Well, the NFL knows this. When you run numbers for like, hey, if a team incurs a fifteen yard penalty on on a given drive, like their their chances of scoring a touchdown go way up. Mm -hmm. Way up, and I, I don't have the figures in front of me. Coaches used to at the beginning of every season take us through this kind of officiating meeting, where it's like, "Hey, if we have one penalty on drive, they have a higher chance of scoring. If it's a 15-yard penalty, it goes up exponentially." So they know this. The NFL knows this. If they can calculate hip drop tackles uh, relative to to you know the danger level on a standard tackle, they also can can calculate what a 15-yard penalty does to a scoring average. Yeah, and like a judgment call like this shouldn't affect the outcome of a game. And 15 yards does it that will often, though. and it's going to. You know? It will at some point. And I think probably the hope for them is that they call it enough early that it's not going to be a big deal late. Uh, but I think what they'll find is because they've never had to make tackles, you end up in these situations more than you want to as a player. You don't want to hurt people, but you end up in these situations.